Hey guys, in this short video, I want to quickly overview some of the best scientifically proven herbs for enhancing all aspects of physical performance or sports performance. So one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is what herbs can I take if I'm an athlete or looking to increase my physical performance? So we get all sorts of questions related to physical performance, herbs for increasing stamina and endurance, herbs for sports performance, herbs for increasing muscular strength and muscle size or muscular development, as well as herbs for recovery, etc. So I've decided that although I've made other videos related to this topic, that I just wanna give you all the best herbs because sometimes I sort of cherry pick my favorite herbs or the ones that I think would be most beneficial systemically overall. But instead, I'm going to give you pretty much every herb that's ever been studied that I can find that is related to enhancing all of these aspects of physical or sports performance. So let's get to it. Let's just jump into a couple of these studies and take a look at some of these herbs that have been scientifically proven to enhance various aspects of physical performance. So let's start off with a couple of different herbs that have been proven in clinical studies to enhance muscular development or growth and strength. Now, if we look at this study here, it's been actually found that a handful of different herbs, herbs that I particularly love, like tribulus, ginkgo biloba, rhodiola, and cordyceps have all been demonstrated in numerous studies to have benefits on muscular growth and strength in active men. So the takeaway or conclusion from these studies is that between two groups of people, both who were tested on various exercises to test their physical strength, their muscularity, etc., one group were given these various herbs and another group was not. And the outcome was that the group that supplemented with these various herbs that I just mentioned all had greater increases in muscular strength and growth. Which brings us to another premier herb for all aspects of physical performance, which is KSM 66 ashwagandha. So looking at this particular study right here, a very similar trial was done where a group of men engaged in physical activities, tested on various exercises, were supplementing with ashwagandha, and then a group of men who did not. And what was found in this study, if we have a look, was that compared to the placebo subjects, the group treated with ashwagandha had significantly greater increases in muscle strength on the bench press exercise, the leg extension exercise, and significant greater muscle size increase at the arms and chest. So summarizing that study, men who were active, who were engaging in these sorts of exercises, you know, the common bench press, leg extension, bodybuilder sort of exercises for developing muscular aesthetic, the guys who supplemented with ashwagandha had improvements on their physical performance, so they were stronger, but they also had greater muscle increases, so they had greater gains, if you will. So already we have five really great herbs that have been clinically proven to increase muscular strength and muscular development. So if you're a guy looking to increase your strength and the size of your muscles, then I would recommend looking into supplementing with ginkgo biloba, rhodiola, ashwagandha, tribulus, and cordyceps. Moving along, let's talk about some herbs for muscle recovery. This is really important because you actually develop your muscle and your strength, not so much in the gym, as much as you do at home when you're resting and your muscles are regenerating and recovering. So both of these things are obviously equally important, but if you're only breaking down the muscle, if you're only putting stress on the muscle in the gym and you're not recovering, you're not going to put on new muscle, you're not going to strengthen that muscle, or in other words, and you're not going to develop larger muscles. So this brings us to a second part of the study on ashwagandha, which basically found that the men who were supplementing with ashwagandha had significantly greater reduction of exercise-induced muscle damage as indicated by stabilizing of serum creatine kinase. So what that means in more layman's terms is that although these men were exercising, engaging in a stressful physical activity, their muscles did not break down as significantly as those who do not supplement ashwagandha. And this is crucial because exercise isn't necessarily supposed to catabolize your muscle. It's supposed to just put a stress and a strain on the muscle, which helps to create these micro tears, which are then regenerated 
through various physiological mechanisms, creatine and protein being major key players, which help the muscle to become stronger, more resilient, and ultimately larger. Looking at some other herbs that could be beneficial for muscle recovery or mitigating the stress and damage that may be done by exercise, which will ultimately be systemically beneficial for enhancing your performance, putting on more strength and size, we have ginseng, or specifically Siberian ginseng in this case. So taking a quick glance at this study, it's been found that the elethericides in Siberian ginseng actually inhibit hydroxyl radical and lipid peroxidation while facilitating mitochondrial activity during exercise. Looking again at some additional research on ginseng, it's been found that not only does ginseng improve cardiorespiratory function, so it improves your ability to oxygenate the cells and breathe basically, it also lowers blood lactate concentrations in addition to improving physical performance. Not to mention ginseng also has a beneficial effect on the central nervous system, acting as an adaptogen, modulating the adrenal and sexual function, providing anti-fatigue properties. So as I say so often in these videos, exercise is a form of stress on the body. So we really want to find that sweet point where exercise is invigorating us, boosting the metabolism without going too far to the extreme that our bodies are overproducing stress chemicals and lactic acid or lactate, which would ultimately indicate sort of adverse effects or a point of diminishing returns. When your body starts to produce tons of these free radicals and lactate, that's an indicator that now exercises is suppressing the metabolism rather than boosting it. So I'd highly recommend looking into supplementing with ashwagandha and Siberian ginseng to mitigate the stress of exercise. The last and final herb that I wanna talk about for improving all aspects of physical performance is none other than coffee or particularly caffeine. So I consider coffee to be an adaptogenic herb. It's a nutritive-like herb, which has many health benefits despite tons of controversy. And I wanna dive into some of that research around caffeine's physical performance enhancing effects. Looking at some research here, Caffeine has been shown to provide great benefits to all sorts of athletic performers. In fact, taken at least one hour prior to exercise or competition, caffeine stimulates greater improvements in measures of strength, the production of dopamine in other neurotransmitters, as well as immune response in runners and cyclists. Caffeine supplementation can also improve performance at different exercise intensity levels, as well as mental vigilance and humor. Now, according to all the research I've done on caffeine, all the studies I've read, there are a couple of major mechanisms behind caffeine's effects in regards to enhancing physical performance and everything just mentioned. First and foremost, caffeine is an adaptogenic-like substance. It actually synergizes with and stimulates the production of progesterone, the primary anti-stress substance in the body, which would make you more resilient to stress. It also has a beneficial effect on the inhibition of free circulating fatty acids that might trigger the production of lactate or lactic acid and suppress immune function. And lastly, caffeine tends to stimulate the function of the mitochondria or ATP synthesis. So it helps your cells make more energy. So there you have it, a pretty complete overview of some of the best herbs clinically proven by science through numerous studies to enhance pretty much every aspect of physical performance. So everything from enhancing your actual performance while you're exercising. So what I mean by that is generally your mental focus or your mental vigilance, your ability to push through and stay on track despite the stress of exercise, as well as increasing your strength and the actual size of your muscles, as well as inhibiting the damage or the stress of exercise while promoting recovery. And to quickly recap those herbs that were mentioned, there was Siberian ginseng, Cordyceps, rhodiola, ginkgo biloba, tribulus, and of course, ashwagandha, and coffee or caffeine. So there you have it, seven clinically proven herbs to optimize every aspect of physical performance. I personally love all of these herbs. These happen to be some of my favorite personal herbs. And I personally, before every workout, at least an hour before, make coffee. And I tend to add at least one or sometimes multiple of these herbs. In addition to those, I also personally like polyricus black ant for the ATP boost, the zinc for boosting testosterone, pine pollen, and I also like to add some niacinamide and L-thionine. The niacinamide helps to inhibit the release of free fatty acids similar to caffeine, and L-thionine helps to act as a GABA agonist, so it helps to increase the production of GABA, which is an anti-stress sort of neurotransmitter that keeps you in a more parasympathetic or relaxed state. 
So the combination of the L-thionine with the caffeine gives you a really smooth, clean, focused energy, I've noticed, and is really great, especially combined with some of these herbs here mentioned. So there you have it. Again, seven clinically proven herbs recommended by me, but also proven through science. If you're interested in learning more about their physiological mechanisms, I'll be linking the study that I'm referencing on all of these herbs beneath this video. Otherwise, that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos just like this. And of course, if you're interested in supplementing with any or all of these herbs here, you can find those on our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.